Did Corey LaJoy intentionally wreck Kyle Busch this weekend at Pocono? The biggest talking point coming out of this weekend's race at Pocono isn't going to be Ryan Blaney's win. It is going to be whether or not Corey LaJoy intentionally wrecked Kyle Busch on that lap 122 restart going off into turn one. Now, it, of course, set the internet on fire when it happened yesterday. People calling him a hack, people calling him the worst driver in NASCAR, people saying that he needs to be suspended, questioning why he's there, saying that stacking pennies is going to turn into stacking burgers because this guy just cannot race. He dumped Jimmy Johnson back at Kansas earlier in the year. He just absolutely cannot win a race. He fell flat on his face when he got in the nine car to replace Chase Elliott last year at Gateway. And now he intentionally wrecks Kyle Busch going off into turn one. But did he intentionally wreck Kyle Busch? I think that's the biggest question that is going to have to be answered at some point this week. Now, a lot of fans were calling for penalties for Corey LaJoy, for NASCAR to do something about this. And I'll be completely honest. I do not think that NASCAR issues any sort of penalty on Tuesday or Wednesday whenever they get around to it for Corey LaJoy and his actions on track Sunday. Unless, unless... There is just an insurmountable amount of incriminating evidence in SMT data and radio transmission, something along those lines. But what we've heard from his radio, Corey just says that the eight hooked himself off the front of the seven car, which I don't think any of us agree with whatsoever. His team was a little over aggressive on the radio, which is curious considering that Kyle Busch does race for them in the truck series. So it's an odd thing to be as aggressive as they were. Like, just relax, dude. Not that big of a deal. Typically, Kyle Busch wouldn't even be running back here with you guys, but those RCR cars are absolute dog food right now and that's just kind of where they're at so that was odd but did he intentionally wreck him well when you look at the video everybody that watched it is immediately like yeah he, he hooks him he spends him been spending too much time with Carson Hosovar went all family guy I'm gonna turn right now and just turned right into the eight car of Kyle Busch and sent him down off into turn one collecting four other cars in the process and pissing a lot of people off at, at that point but when you watch the video right here this head-on shot is the perfect example of how just the field fans out heading off into turn one on a restart and that's typical right nothing out of the ordinary here we see this happen all the time five six seven wide at times um and going off into turn one that's what you're seeing the eight car goes down low the seven car tries to go even lower and then Corey apparently looked up and saw the corner coming and said oh right we're on an oval here i am going to have to make this corner so he realizes his approach to make the corner isn't going to work where he's at he then moves back up the racetrack to try to get in line and ends up hooking the eight car in the process so that's what you see right here you see the seven car move back up the racetrack so for Corey saying that the eight car hooked himself that's just vehemently not true we all have eyes here unless you're stevie wonder in which case i'll just verbally tell you it's not true so you see him move up the racetrack hooks the eight car and spins him now freeze frame right here you can see the seven car absolutely angled back across the racetrack headed right we're going into a left-hand corner. He's headed right to try to get back up in the line to then make said corner, and he hooks Kyle Busch in the process. Corey LaJoy over the radio said that the eight car hooked himself. After the race, he got out. Sounded like an absolute muppet because he, I guess, refused to watch a replay or didn't have time because if he would just watch a replay, he would see his car, in fact, does go back up the racetrack lanes to try to make the corner and hooks the eight car in the process. So for Corey to get out and just be as steadfast as he was and being like, no, deny, 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 I didn't do this. He did it to himself. That's just not how I think anybody else sees it whatsoever. Even from the onboard shot from Corey LaJoy, you see him go, he moves down. You see the seven car or the eight car rather move down. He tries to go below him. The eight car does counter. The eight car counters and tries to block him. We're not disputing that at all. The seven hits the eight car and then... The seven moves up the racetrack and just punts the eight. That's just what happens right here. He Pat McAfee'd him, punted him off into the corner, sent him like a package on FedEx, like somebody taking something off of, off of an airplane and just absolutely throwing it onto the luggage cart right there. No regards for what's going to happen on the other end uh, of that. And boy, did he take out a few people in the process. So for Corey, the denial is one thing. And... I, let's play devil's advocate real quick so when you ride on board with the eight car of kyle bush you can hear him go up against the rev limiter right up against the chip and when that happens that does cut back on power so maybe maybe Corey lajoy anticipated the eight car being in front of him when he moved back up the eight car wasn't there he hooks him and spins him out he anticipated the eight car continuing his momentum on but when he hits the chip it slows down and maybe that's what causes Corey to when he moves up to slot in behind the eight car hook him and send him 
Maybe that's what happened. But man, it doesn't sound like that because Corey didn't mention that a single time on the radio in his post-race interview, anything. And I'm sure on Stacking Pennies, he's going to have the same exact take that he had when he got out of the race car, that it was still Kyle Busch's fault, which I just don't think anybody else shares that same sentiment whatsoever. But for LaJoy, he's heading into a 2025 season, which is literally going to be make or break for him, right? He's never won a NASCAR national touring uh, event. He hasn't won a NASCAR's top three series. The biggest event win that he has is in a K&N E-Series race, which, hey, congrats on that but it's certainly not one that is one of the big three series and certainly hasn't really done enough to really warrant the position that he's in spire is spending a ton of money literal hundreds of millions of dollars at this point to be a nascar cup series team to be competitive to go out there and try to win races they just hired rodney childers for him next year they're putting a ton of resources into this team and if Corey doesn't perform next year that team just absolutely has to move on without him and put somebody else in the car that can get it done because at this point as as I mentioned before, Corey LaJoy still does not have a top 10 finish on a non-drafting track. Meanwhile, his teammates Zane Smith and Carson Hosvar both have them this year, and they're rookies. And Corey's been in here for a few seasons now. And all we hear from Corey every single time is if he had the resources, if he had the right opportunity, he could be a race winner. He could be a contender. And don't get me wrong. The guy has absolutely contended before in the lower series. I mean, he went head to head with Joey Logano is a guy that can go out there and get things done. But at every turn in the NASCAR National Touring Series, we have just not seen that happen. I mean, he was in a great position to win the truck series uh, at Daytona with Spire. Just doesn't get it done. He's been in position in the Cup Series with Spire to win at Atlanta doesn't get it done and every time you think that he might he just does a Matt Benedetto and doesn't get it done so although Matt does have a truck series win at Talladega controversial don't think he should have got it but he at least has one Corey doesn't have any so for Corey it's one of those years coming up that's like make or break and you can't be doing things like this running back in 27th place and for him to get out and be like those are just the things you have to do Buddy, this is 27th. Who cares if you're going to finish 27th or 28th? Neither of you are going to make the playoffs without getting a win, and neither of you are going to win at this point. So who really gives a, good, a damn at this point? Because all you end up doing is wrecking a lot of race cars, especially for teams that didn't deserve to have their cars wrecked, and then you just get out and sound like a fool afterwards. And Corey is a likable character, right? He's a good personality for the sport, and maybe that's just like where his role is in the sport is as a personality that does some one-offs here and there but right now to get out of the car and be like yeah i didn't do this ah man the video just absolutely goes right against it so so let me know in the comments do you think Corey the joy intentionally wrecked him do you think he didn't like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog